the wonderful mistletoe. How many of us have been kissed under the mistletoe and hung mistletoe up in our house every Christmas? The Druids thought the mistletoe was so precious and when they cut it, they used to cut it down with a golden sickle and it should never touch the ground because if it did, it took away all its magical powers. They used to hang it in their house for good luck, healing powers, and to ward off evil spirits. Do you do a kissing bow? They're very popular at weddings now. Well, they go back, way back. So when did this all start? Well, the kissing under the mistletoe started in the Norse mythology, where they thought mistletoe was very good luck and for happiness. Kissing bows were originally made with five wooden hoops that made a ball. It was filled with evergreens like ivy, holly, and then it would have beautiful red ribbon and hanging from the red ribbon would be red, luscious apples. And then it would be lit with candles. And from this, a massive bunch of mistletoe would hang down with all its lovely berries. These are a modern take on the bows. Still as pretty and beautiful. Mistletoe is mentioned a lot in Roman and Greek mythology. The Greeks believed it had power even over hell. This is Enes from Virgil's Enid. He was a survivor of Troy. Venus helps him. He needs to enter the underworld. She sends two doves to help him find a bow of golden mistletoe. He needs this to find his way through the forest that is blocked into Hades. When he shows the bow to the ferryman at the River Styx, he and the bow are safely taken across the river. Everything about mistletoe is so lovely and positive, but the farmers looked to mistletoe in the trees and if there was no berries, it was sure sign of a bad year. The Romans had their celebration, which was called Saturnalia, and they worshipped their god Satin. This was from the 17th to the 25th. Then it ended with a winter solstice, big celebration to bring in the new year. And then we've got the Greek mythology, where they had their god Dionysus, and they would refer to him as the holy infant. He was the son of Zeus, the king of the gods, and his mother was a mortal. Christmas is such a fascinating time, as well as an enjoyable time, and there's so many lovely things that go with it. There's so much behind it all, even the humble holly. This represents Christ and the ivy, the Virgin Mary. There is all these things, Father Christmas. Well, that was St. Nicholas first. Do you know about the dark shadow of St. Nicholas? Who is Krampus? Krampus is the Christmas devil that comes to punish naughty children, the shadow of St. Nicholas. There are many horned deities throughout history in Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Norse mythology. Krampus is a goat-like figure with very furry skin, long fangs and claws, and he carries heavy chains so the children can hear him coming. On his back, he carries a basket and he also has birch sticks to beat the children with. Why the basket? This is to carry the children off to hell. Krampus 
the half demon, half goat. German Krampen means claw. He's become very commercialised and is often seen on Christmas cards and chocolates and all kinds of gifts. On December the 5th, Krampus punishes children by whipping them with his switch, then taking them off to his lair. And then on the 6th, St Nicholas comes and he rewards the good children on the nice list. Krampus runs are still done today. People have been dressing up very similar to Krampus for centuries, but today they dress up and run through the streets in places like Germany and Austria. Although we don't have Krampus in this country, how many of us were told that if you were naughty, you would not get your presents, but you would get a lump of coal? Well, that comes from Krampus. In Roman times, holly was used for their festival, Saturnalia, where they would make big bows and give them as gifts to their friends, along with lots of presents. It represented their god, Saturn. This is a rare golden berry holly, which you don't see very often now, which is a shame. And I'm lucky enough to have one growing outside. Holly is also to do with Christ, the thorns of Christ. It's protective, it wades off evil spirits, and we hang it in our house every Christmas. St Nicholas, well there's not a lot actually written about his personal life, but he grew up in a very wealthy family. He lost his parents, unfortunately, to the plague. And then he took on a humble life and dedicated himself to helping the needy and making their lives a little bit better. During the time of St Nicholas, the Roman Emperor Diocletian ordered all Christians who did not follow the order of the Romans, they would be imprisoned. St Nicholas was imprisoned and was treated very badly and often beaten. Eventually, Diocletian died and St Nicholas was released and he returned to his homeland of Myra. We see Father Christmas now all dressed in red but once upon a time he would have worn green. There is a very grisly legend about St Nicholas. One day while visiting his local butcher he went down into the cellar, only to find out that the meat was actually made up of three children to be sold as ham. St Nicholas resurrected all three children and he restored them back to life. Here we see St Nicholas and Santa Claus on this beautiful Christmas picture. The name Santa Claus evolved from the Dutch Sinterklaas. Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in 1843. On the 19th of December it went out and by Christmas Eve it had completely sold out. It was that popular. It's such a wonderful story that we all read and see on the TV every year. He actually made a difference. His book actually made the very rich people, which were the only people that could afford presents back then, help the poor by giving them gifts and money. The middle classes started to have more presents because the toys that had always been handmade were being manufactured, so more and more people could have presents. But the poor children, of course, not quite the same. If they did get anything, it would be a stocking with an orange and maybe a handful of nuts. Now, let's imagine that you were just about to have your Christmas celebration or your Christmas drink, but it was banned. During the English Civil War, Christmas and all festivities 
to do with Christmas were banned. We think of Oliver Cromwell as banning Christmas, but this isn't actually the case. It was Parliament that actually banned Christmas. In 1647, a law was enforced, an Act of Parliament banning Christmas celebrations. Christmas was regarded by the Puritans as a wasteful festival that threatened the very core of their Christian beliefs. All activities relating to Christmas, including attending a Catholic Mass, were forbidden. Soldiers were ordered to go out on the streets and take by forces necessary food cooked for Christmas celebrations. They would knock on people's doors and take the food away. They could be fined or worse. The inns were closed, as were all the places of entertainment. In the aftermath of the English Civil War, following the Restoration in 1660, the Royalists reintroduced the good old days of feasting and good cheer. So here is Santa's team. Dancer, Dancer loves to dance. She is usually more clever than Prancer. She is blessed with beauty and elegance. Dasher, Santa loves him for his super fast speed. He always ensures timely gift deliveries. Prancer, one of the most vigorous of them all is Prancer. He runs as he is flying in the air. Santa takes him wherever he wants to impress others with his majestic entry. Vixen, Vixen is as clever as a fox. She is humorous and friendly and knows how to make them all laugh. Comet, Comet stays with Cupid. He is extremely fast as his name suggests and the kids love the character. Cupid, like the name, is the most friendly and sincere fellow. His motto is to spread love and cheer. Donder, Donder is a German word in origin. Donder means thunder. He makes thunder-like appearance as his voice is loud and aggressive. Blitzen is also a German word. He has supernatural power of infusing lightning and his motto is to charge everyone up with his powers. Someone's missing. Where is Rudolph? Well, he comes much later. And also, if it was Christmas reindeers pulling the sleigh, well, they'd all be female because the male antlers have already dropped their antlers. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey and adventure into Christmas and what it's all about and what it represents. Well, this was part one. We've got more to come where we're going to talk about Christmas puddings, Christmas cakes, all the food to go with Christmas. I'm looking forward to this one because uh, I like my food. Oh, and my drink. We might be talking about the spirit of Christmas, literally. See you soon.